Hello, my name is Mr. Marseille and I'm from Outward Academy Acklam. You might recognize my voice. It's the one that has been on the previous videos. Um, more than my voice, you might recognize my hands. My hands are the ones that have been doing the doodling on the whiteboard. So uh, yeah, you should have heard, heard from me before at least. So I'm going to take you through this um, lesson. It's on electromagnetic waves. Now, electromagnetic is quite a long word. So we often shorten it to abbreviation of EM, as you can see in the title here. So I'm going to refer to them as EM waves. So the challenge objectives in this lesson is that you are able to list the seven categories of EM waves in order of increasing frequency. So let's break that down. So the command word here is list. List means just to write them down. So you need to be able to write down the seven categories, so that's the groups. So write down the seven groups of EM waves in order of increasing frequency. Remember, frequency is a keyword and it means number of waves per second. So you're gonna write them down in order from the lowest number of waves per second to the highest number of waves per second. The Aspire objective in this one is that you are able to describe the uses and dangers um, of each category of electromagnetic wave. So the, the command word there is describe, and that just means to, to say what it is. So you just need to say what the uses are and say what the dangers are of each EM wave. And there are seven of them. So before we jump into the new stuff, it's really, really important for learning over time that you recall what you've already learned. Um, and you just practice you practice that process of thinking about what you've learned previously. So what I'd like you to do is um, on the board is a grid with six different colors in, well, three different colors. And those colors represent how long ago that information was given to you. So the green boxes should be quite recent that you've done that. That's about calculating wave speed. The yellowy orange boxes, they, they're a bit longer ago. And the blue boxes, they're from the very, very first video. So what I'd like you to do is pause this video because it will take you a decent amount of time. And I'd like you to attempt those. Just just write down your answers on, on another piece of paper. Now, it, it doesn't matter or not at, the, at this point whether you're right or wrong. What matters is that you practice trying to answer those questions. So I've got a little timer up here. It's currently on 10 seconds. I'm going to press this and I'm going to let it count down. That's not because this task will take you 10 seconds. That's just to let you know um, when the answers are going to come back on. So if you pause the screen and you can unpause it just before that timer ticks over to end. Okay, here are the answers. So what I suggest you do is I suggest you get a different, a different color pen, just like we would do um, when we do our self and peer assessment. And you look at your answers and you compare them to the answers that are on the board. Now, the reason that you need to do it in a different color pen is because it's really important that you make your your gaps in, in learning or just the stuff that you, you probably knew, but you weren't able to quickly recall. You just need to make that obvious. Um, you need to know what you don't know. And you need to be able to quickly know that that's the area that you need to focus on. And if you need to go back and watch one of the previous videos, then you need to know which, which video it is that you need to go back and look at. Okay, so once you've done that, we'll start with the new information. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the categories of EM waves. So the electromagnetic waves, they are actually... We can we can describe them as a family. You can see from this picture on the board here that that there's um there's a group of them. Okay, so they are all one continuous spectrum. So it's a spy by spectrum. Imagine if you see a rainbow. It runs from um, red all the way down to violet. But there's there's um there's no actual gap. There's no divide between each color. They all blend into each other. And, and EM waves work in a very similar way. So I'm going to show you another, another one of my videos um, that I've done on the whiteboard for you, where I'm going to explain a way that you can categorize these and, and how you can remember the, 
the categories using um, a mnemonic um, and also how to identify which are the the long wavelengths, which are the shorter wavelengths, which are the high frequency, which are the low frequency and which one carries more energy and which one carries the least amount of energy. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put that on the screen now. I'd like you to watch it and then there'll be some questions following it. When we say that the EM waves can be um, put into categories, what we actually mean is that the EM wave is one continuous spectrum. And it's, it's a family of seven different um, different waves. Um, and they're different because they've got different wavelengths. And those different wavelengths mean that they have different properties. They behave differently. But they are one continuous spectrum. So I've tried to draw this beforehand because I've, I always have troubles drawing this diagram. So what I've tried to represent here is at this end, we've got a long wavelength. There's, there's a, a longer distance between... Um, uh, between the peaks or any part, identical part of the wave. And at this end, we've got a very short, very, very short wavelength. So we go to, so we go from, um, so the wavelength is actually getting bigger this way. So the, it's increasing wavelength. So the wavelength is getting bigger that way. So that's, that's the long wavelength. And this is a short wavelength end. Now, in terms of the wavelength, you do actually need to know these the numbers. So the very shortest wavelengths are 10 to the power of minus 15 meters. Okay, so really, really tiny. And the longest wavelengths are really quite large, 10 to the power of 4 meters. That's thousands of meters. So we go long distance, like thousands of distance between the peaks. And at this side, absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny distances between the peaks. So if there are more waves per second, that means, well, sorry, there's shorter wavelength. That means that we should, we should have looked at this relationship before, but the frequency is going to be higher. So the frequency is going to actually be higher at this end. So if this is frequency. So this is low frequency, and this is high frequency. So short wavelength, high frequency, high frequency, and long wavelength, low frequency. And the other thing is energy. So the high frequency waves actually transfer more energy. So low energy, and this is high energy. So I've told you about the spectrum. So now we need to know about the actual waves. Now, sometimes you will, you can see this drawn both ways. We could start it here with the, 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 um, the shorter wavelengths and the longer wavelengths at this side. But just because the way I like to remember this, and I find it easy, I like to start with the longer wavelengths. And the, the reason why, and the way, I, the way that I did this is I use um, a little memory aid, uh, a memnomic. I remember that rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses. Okay, it's a very strange little menoric, okay? But I can picture that scene in my head. Okay, I've got this person, all right, and they've got these x-ray glasses on. The reason they use their, their x-ray glasses is because it allows them to see through the cards. So they're in Vegas, they're, they're, they're in, they can see through all the cards, they know what all the cards are, so they're uh, they're generating loads and loads of money, so they're, they're rich, all right? There we go, look, how happy is with all, all this money. And if I remember that rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses, I can actually remember the order. So I know that this longest wavelength, so this goes in, this is why I remember it this way, because it's the longest wavelength, is radio. So these are radio waves. So we've got radio waves there. And then the M is microwaves. Okay, so rich um, radio waves, microwaves. Then the I is infrared. Infrared, infrared waves. The V is visible light. That's the, the only part of the spectrum that as human beings that we can actually see. 
And the reason I, I, I do my waves this way is because I, you often get asked to zoom in a little bit on visible light because because it's the one we can see, we should know more about it. Um, so infrared comes here. So I'm, I'm going to put red because what infrared means, it means um, uh, like uh, below red, so infra. So here is the red. And if you remember the colours of the rainbow, so Richard of York gave battle in vain. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That actually tells you what this next one is going to be. So the next one is below, well, above violet. So we've got visible, then the U is ultra violet. And the X are uh, X-rays. That's easy. Use X-ray glasses, or is actually use X-rays. And the G is gamma. Okay. So you need to know those seven categories. Let's go through them. So we've got the longest wavelength a radio, but they have the lowest frequency and the lowest energy. Then we've got microwaves, slightly longer wave, uh, slightly shorter wavelength. Sorry. Then infrared with a slightly shorter wavelength. Then the visible light made up of red light, orange light, yellow light, green light, blue light, indigo light, and violet light. Then we've got ultraviolet. Then x-rays. And then gamma. And by the time we get to this gamma, these waves have got a very short wavelength, but a very, very high frequency. And they are given a lot. They're transferring a lot of energy, which means that these waves, these gamma waves are very dangerous. The x-rays are pretty dangerous too, as is ultraviolet. These are the more dangerous waves. Now that you've watched that video and you have some information about the different categories of EM waves, it's really important that we do something with that information. Because otherwise, it will just be an extra thing that you've seen today and a lot of it will be lost. So this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to do this task here which is to put the categories of EM waves in order of increasing frequency. So start with the lowest frequency one and work down to get to the highest frequency one. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to do this task. Now, for some people, you may have seen EM waves before and you might find this really, really easy and you might already be most of the way through that list. So if you are, here's an extension. Write them in order of increasing wavelength. So that's a, a different way of ordering them. And if you want to go even further, try and suggest a link between the frequency and the danger. So the frequency of the wave and the danger. Now, some people might need some more support. So in the green box here, I've told you that the longest frequency wavelength, um, sorry, lowest frequency is the one that has the longest wavelength. And the one with the lowest frequency is radio. So our first wave here should be radio. And I've also given you a copy of my um, mnemonic, which is rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses. So remember, you can use those first letters to guide you. If you need some more time, pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to go to the next slide now. Okay, so now we know about the categories. Um, if you were able to do that last activity, then you are now able to move on to the Aspire. So I'll just tell you the order you should have put. You should have put... Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. So if you've got that, you're ready to move on. If not, just flick back in the video and try again. Now, what we need to look at now is the uses and dangers. So I'm going to show you another video that I've um, done on the whiteboard. And then again, we're going to come and we're going to try. And this time we're going to apply it to an exam question. So I'm going to start with long wavelengths and we're going to go to short wavelengths. I'm going to try and make this um, an overview because there's a lot of information here and this video could easily go on for a very long time and I want to keep it quite short. So I'm just going to cover the absolute basics. So longest wavelength, uh, we're going to use my memory aid, which is rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses. R is radio waves. Radio waves. So... Radio waves are the longest wavelength. And what radio waves do is they're used for communication. They use for radio communication. They're used for, um, so let's draw, let's draw a radio. They're used for radio communication. 
they're used for TV. That's the ones with the aerial. Communication. Um, and then when we get to the, the shorter ones, so microwaves are actually a type of radio wave too. But micro means small. So these are, these are um, a lower, um, shorter wavelength radio waves. They're used for mobile phone communication. Okay, so they're all communication. Microwaves are also used to heat food too. I'm just going to go a little bit more detail about how radio waves are transmitted because you will need to know this if you're doing a high paper. So, here's an antenna. An antenna has an electron. So antennas are made of metal, and in, in the metals have got three electrons. So if we move an electron forwards and backwards, if we oscillate it, we get an electric field produced in the form of a wave. We also get a magnetic field, that's why it's an EM wave. But we're just going to look at the electric. So if you've got a receiver, so your aerial, what it does is, your aerial is also made of metal, which contains electrons. So that electron gets oscillated at the same frequency as the, the one that was um, oscillated by the transmitter, which is which how it picks up the information. And it's how you can tune into the radio station. You just match the frequency. Um, one of the other things that I really, really need to know about in terms of radio waves is this, is that light and all the waves travel in straight lines. So if you wanted to send your signal to a radio station that was exactly in line with you, that would be fine. But in reality, the world isn't like that. The world is curved. It's round, like that. It's a sphere. So you might actually need to get your radio signal to here. Now, some radio waves are able to do this depending on their wavelength, because around the world is this is, a, is our atmosphere. And part of the atmosphere is this is this layer called the ionosphere. Now, one of the properties of EM waves that I haven't mentioned yet is that they can be reflected and they can be refracted. We'll talk about reflection and reflection um, in later videos because they need to go into a little bit more depth. But basically, reflection, you should be used to, um, to seeing in mirrors. You look in a mirror, you see yourself staring back at you. That's reflection. So the wave is sent out in a straight line, hits the ionosphere, it bounces back at exactly the same angle that it goes in at. So we've got, hits up ionosphere, bounces back, and therefore it can get around this curve of the world. So that's how radio waves work, is that they can bounce off the ionosphere. Sometimes though, we need to go through the ionosphere, say with mobile phone signals, because mobile phones work by actually communicating with satellites. So you're here, okay, and you've got, you've got nobody. <laughs> put your body in you're here and you've got your mobile phone and you've got to communicate with this satellite now there is this ionosphere in the way so if you sent a radio wave it would just bounce off and that would be no good so you need to send a wave that can get through the ionosphere and that is microwaves so mobile phones use microwaves to communicate um, with satellites and things outside of the ionosphere the other use of microwaves is for heating your food up okay so here's your microwave and within it, you've got some food of some kind spinning around on a plate. And as the microwaves um, penetrate it, they're absorbed by the food. It causes oscillations in the, the water molecules. And that causes um, the, the substance in the microwave to heat up. Um, but that's also a danger because it could cause your body to heat up as well because your body is, it has, contains these, these same molecules. That, that can be oscillated by the microwaves so that could cause heating in you so there is a little bit of a worry and it was more um and there are studies being done into are, are my mobile phones safe because they are transmitting microwaves and microwaves we know can cause internal so inside heating of our body tissues um but so far the amount of evidence that we've got back from the studies suggest that they are relatively safe um, and we don't have any long-term evidence because mobile phones haven't been around um, for long enough to have these long long studies to see how they affect humans over time so uh, we're okay with the evidence at the moment but we, we constantly have to be looking at it um, 
infrared waves. That's our next one down. Oh, it's spelled infra hyphen red. Infra red. Uh, now, I'm going to group these together because these are all used for communication. Oh, better spell the words right. Communication. So we said we could have radio waves, could be radio, TV, mobile phones, and infrared is used for um, remote controls. So you've got your TV, you want to change the channel, you can't be bothered to get up off the sofa. So you point your remote control at it, that sends out a wave in a straight line, which transfers information to your TV. So infrared are used in remote controls. Um, they're also used for thermal imaging cameras. So let's say that you, um, sometimes on a night, you hear a helicopter, a terrible helicopter, but you hear a helicopter over and you think, oh, what's that helicopter doing? Looking for someone in, on the night's dark, can't see them. Well, in reality, they're using an infrared camera. So let's say we've got someone here and they're hiding, all right, they're, they're going to hide under, under a bush or in the shelter of a tree. Okay, or whatever this is. Maybe they're, in, maybe they're in a cave. All right, but they're hiding. So this infrared camera can detect heat. Um, so it will be able to see that this person is 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 um, giving out heat, emitting heat, whereas these rocks of the cave or the bushes aren't. So they will be able to see that person hiding there, and then they can tell whoever it is that is looking for them exactly where they are. So infrared is heat. So when you stand in the sun and you feel the warmth on your skin, it's because of the infrared component um, of the EM waves. Um, the danger is, though, that it can actually burn your skin as well. So if you stand too close to a radiator, which is giving out heat, and you put your hand on it and you leave your hand on it, you don't take it off when it hurts, you will burn your skin. The next one is visible. So this is the only part of the spectrum that we can see, visible light. Now, we're going to have to separate this out a little bit more. So we've got infrared here, um, and the, the key word there is the word red. So if we're going from long to short wavelength, the first, um, the first wave that you can make out from visible light is the red wavelengths. So we've got, so I use another memnomic here. So I use Richard of York gave battle in vain. Um, but the other one you can use is you could use Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. Okay, and that just helps you remember the colors in the correct order. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I'm going to change that G because it's not very good G. There we go. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, here we go, violet. <laughs> it's small with the words there. Okay, they are the different colors, uh, the different wavelengths of light which, which produce color. You need to know a little bit how color works. Let's say we look at an object and you shine in your white light into this object. So it might be from a light bulb or from a torch or something. Let's say it's from a torch. So you are shining in your light from this torch and this is white light. So white light is white, appears white because it's our eyes take in all of these different wavelengths and we see them together as white. So we've got within there, we've got the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo and the violet are transmitted. Now, if this object looks white, that means that it is going to reflect and taken in by your eye. There's your eye then your eye is getting all of the colors, the red, orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, the violet. So that is reflecting all of those different wavelengths. But not everything looks white. Sometimes things look black. So how does that work? Well, if it's black, it means that no light is reflected. So this is actually going to absorb all of that right, the light. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So the object has absorbed all the light, none of it has been reflected, so that object looks black to your eye. Imagine if you turn all the lights off in your house and everything looks black because there's no light reflected. 
but some things have a color so let's say it was orange let's say this object is orange well that that means is that the object absorbs all of the different wavelengths of light apart from orange so the only one that is given out and reflected to the eye is the orange therefore it looks orange same thing for the yellow it would, re it would absorb all wavelengths but yellow gives and the the yellow is reflected that's how light works so the use of visible light is it allows us to see things the, um the other use of visible light is um broadband and fiber optic cables so if you want to send information through the internet the way that you do it is we use this thing which is called a fiber optic cable and remember one of the properties of em waves is that they all are reflected so inside of this these cables like the cables that you use for your internet are mirrors and the light is sent it hits the mirror it reflects off it hits the mirror it reflects off and remember this this law of reflection is that whichever way um the angle that it, it goes in is the same angle that it is reflected out at so like this it keeps going which means that it can go from one place to another and these light waves travel at the speed of light so we've gone in and then we've we've come out so information has gone from a to be at the speed of light so really really fast and we can we can bend these wires and we can put them under the ground so so that information can be traveled over very very long distances very very quickly that's optical fibers so used in broadband um, and the internet what are the dangers what are the dangers of visible light well the danger is uh, if you hear the sun if you stand on the earth and if you stare at it and you don't put your sunglasses on okay he's, he's put his sunglasses on because this person's smart but if you don't put those sunglasses on those waves can damage your eyes so that's why we have to put our sunglasses on so infrared can damage your eyesight ultraviolet ultra you can remember this because it's above violet okay ultra so the ultraviolet how is that used well ultraviolet is used one of the ways is let's say we've got some money now some people forge their money okay they do they forge their uh, their 20 pound notes so the shots sometimes what they do is they shine infrared light onto these notes and if um, um if, if it's a real note it looks a certain way under the infrared light if it's a forgery and just plain paper it will look totally different so they can see whether or not something is a forgery so that's one of the uses of of ultraviolet um the other use of ultraviolet is that sometimes people go in and they uh they shine these lights on themselves okay like this um and the reason that they do that is because they want a lovely suntan okay so sunbeds use these same uv lights and that damages the skin which can cause a suntan but that's also a danger is that we can if you overexpose it this can lead to skin cancer okay so that's why we say you have to put your sunblock on when you go in the sun because the sunblock actually blocks these uv these uv ultraviolet particle um sorry waves which can damage your skin so dangers you lead to skin cancer the way that this works is that, that what we call ionizing and ionizing means that they can remove the electrons from um, cells to turn them into an ion so you you get a charged particle and when the the cells copy again there will be a copying error in the cell so it'll be somehow it will be a little bit different than the cell that it was before because of these copying errors um, and we call that a mutation and these mutations can lead to cancer so ionizing radiation is really dangerous because it can lead to cancers so ultraviolet is ionizing the next one that is is ionizing is x-rays so the uses of x-rays well we use x-rays to look um for our skin to look at bones um so you lay down on a on a bed or something like this okay and you say oh doctor i've hurt my leg something wrong with it but you can't see the issue well what we do is the ultraviolet light so the x-rays go through your body and out the other side and they're absorbed by bone by any any dense material but they're not absorbed by the soft material 
okay? So the bones will absorb it. Wherever there is a break in the bone, it won't absorb it, so you'll see that through. And then when you look at the, the picture afterwards of, of, of this leg, you'll see, oh, that the bone's fine there, but there's a bit missing there, all right? That, that bone is broken. So that's how x-rays work, that this, where there's that, that one there has been able to pass through and it forms an image on a, on a photographic plate. Um, so they're used for, for looking, at, looking at bones inside the body. You wouldn't use an x-ray to look at a, a baby or, or something like that in, inside, of, um, inside of its mother because the, the x-rays are, they're also ionizing. So we have to use them sparingly. We have to think, is, is it a risk versus a reward? So if you've got a broken leg and you, you need it fixing, you need to be able to see that bone to know how to fix it. So it's worth exposing you to a little bit of risk of uh, of the mutations because it you would need quite a lot of x-rays to 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 build those up um it's worth exposing to that risk so that you haven't got a broken leg for the rest of your life or it doesn't heal properly but in terms of x-raying and um a pregnant woman we can use we can use ultrasound which is we can still see the image of the baby and we're not um putting that that baby at risk of these ionizing waves so x-rays, again, ionizing, which means they knock the electrons off um, cells, which means that they produce copying errors, which means that they can get mutations, which can lead to cancer. Another, um, the next, the very last one is gamma. And gamma is the most dangerous. I'm putting these dots next to them because these represent ionizing. These are the dangerous. And remember, this one is the shortest wavelength, highest frequency, so most most energy is being transferred here so this is the most dangerous it's a danger it gives it its property though because what we can do is we can fire a very targeted gamma wave at a cancerous cell because what gamma does is it ionizes and it just destroys them so it can kill the cancer cells the problem is is it can also kill the the healthy cells around the cancer cells too, which is why when people are undergoing radiotherapy, they often can get quite ill. As well as killing cancer cells, it can kill, it can kill other types of cells too. So let's say that you've been using a scalpel or something during an operation and you want to sterilize that equipment, you shine your gamma ray at it, it kills all of the bacteria on it. What you can even do is you can even put this in a bag and then shine it at it. And it means that that is going to be totally sterile until you open that bag, okay? So used for sterilizing equipment, used for cancer treatment, but if you are exposed to gamma rays, again, they are ionizing, which can actually cause a mutation, which can lead to cancer. So gamma rays, you wanna make sure that you are using some kind of protection if you're, you're coming across them a lot, like someone who is giving x-rays, they leave the room when they're administrating gamma rays so that, they, that the gamma rays don't go through their body. Um, or they would wear a lead apron and lead is able to block the gamma rays. I've put on the screen now um, a visual, which you're welcome to pause and, and take your time over looking at, which, which sort of talks about, uh, well, not talks about, but shows you um, everything that was discussed in, in that, that video. So if you want to pause your screen, and if you need to, come, come back to this screen and, and read it. it. It's a really, really brilliant image that just, just has everything there that we've talked about. Okay, so let's let's apply this. So what I'd like you to do is I'd just like you to read this exam question. And, well, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm, I'm going to let you read it and figure out what you have to do. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. So when these 30 seconds run out, I'm going to go to the answer and, and I'm going to show you what your answer should be like. I'll give you a bit of a guide, though, in the next 20 seconds. Look for a command word. Look for a word that tells you to do something. And put a box around that, or in, in, if you're just imagining this, imagine the box around that. And that will tell you what to do. Okay, so the command word was to draw a line. And it said draw a line from each device. So there are three devices. The exam question also told you that one has been done for you and that each device uses a different type of EM wave. So none of the answers there for the radio, TV, or filament lamp could have been ultraviolet. 
So you had to draw three lines to the other ones. And this is what you should have got. You should have got radio waves for the radio. All right, nice straightforward one, that one. I'd hope you'd all get that. The TV remote control, if you remembered from the video that I explained, that is infrared because infrared are used for communication, but we can't see those. They are non-visible. And the filament lamp, well, you should know that when you turn a light on, um, it increases the visible light in the room. So a filament lamp uses visible light. Yeah. If it didn't use visible light, then there'd be no point turning the lamp on because that's the only part of the EM spectrum that we can see. Okay, so we've reached the end of this lesson. So what I'd like you to do now is to have a go at the Google quiz um, and then turn that in when you're ready with it. Take your time, um, don't rush your answers. And if you need to, come back to this video to, to help you. If you want to stretch yourself though, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a 10 second timer now. And in 10 seconds, I'm gonna add a, an extra activity just to really make sure that you know this topic, but it is totally optional. Okay, this activity is something a bit different. A lot of you might never have seen an activity like this. This is what we call a goal-free activity. And a goal-free activity is a question that doesn't have a question. It's an opportunity for you to show off your learning. And the reason that we do this is because um, a lot of studies have shown that in order to, to really know something and take something in, you have to go beyond just knowing the facts. What you have to do is you have to synthesize it in your brain and do something with that information. And there are a couple of ways to do this. You could explain it to someone else. So you could take everything in this video, go and find a parent or a sibling, and just explain it to them. And by doing that, you have to build these links in your brain that allows you to really understand that information because you can't you can't explain something really well unless you know it really well. So that's one way. Another way is to sort of just get a blank piece of paper and sit down and just write down absolutely everything that you know. And that's a brilliant way as well. And another way is this. It's a goal free activity, similar to the blank piece of paper, but we've got a starting point. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw that image on a piece of paper, just, just this wave with the with the longer here and closer together here. I'm not going to use any scientific words because that's the whole point. And I want you to write down absolutely everything that you can about that image, whether it be stuff that you've learned in this video, whether it be stuff that you've learned in the topic so far. There's so much content that you could put on just around this one image. So if you're confident with doing that, pause the video now and do what you can. But because it might be the first time you've done it, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start to build up this, this, um, this goal-free image myself. And if at any point while I'm building up this goal-free image, you think, oh, I know what to do now, pause the video and get on with it on your own. Okay, so here is my goal-free task. I've just drawn the, um, I've just drawn the wave. So the first thing I might start to think about is something that in, in this recent video is I might start to think about where the, the wavelengths are. So if that's enough to jog your memory, pause me and then come back to me. So I'm going to label this area here as the long wavelength. Okay, and the symbol for wavelength is this lambda symbol there. So that's the long wavelength. And therefore I'm going to label this side as the short wavelength. So we're going long to short wavelength. Um, the next thing I might do is I might actually start to talk about the frequency. So again, if that inspires you, pause this and then come back to it. So this is where we've got the higher frequency because we've got more waves per second. So this is the higher frequency. So the highest frequency and this is the lower Okay, 
Um, it's relative though, that this is higher frequency and this is lower frequency would be probably better to say. Um, now I might want to talk about the energy. Well, where is the more energy? Here. So this is higher energy. And this is lower. Okay. So you can see already that just from this one image, I'm, I'm able to build up quite a lot. And I'm, I'm having to think about um, these ideas and, and pull them from my brain and link them together. And that, that's how we learn. And that's how you just make sure you learn something really, really well. Uh, what can I talk about next? Well, actually, I could look at the wave and I could start to put in roughly my seven different categories. So again, if that's enough to, to jog your memory, um, you can do that yourself. So I, I'm going to do that in a different color. So the longest wavelength here, these are my R. So remember, rich, let's do it like this way. Let's see, we've got seven. One, two, um, three, four, five, six, and seven. So rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses. Let's fill those in. So R is radio. Again, if you know now, pause it, do it yourself. Microwaves, infra, red. Make sure you always get the spelling, infra, red, visible. Ultra, sorry about the small text here, but I'm saying it as well, x-ray and gamma. That's that's terrible. G A M M A. Okay, so we've got our seven categories in. What else could we add in? Well, I could take this visible light and I could zoom in on my visible light. There we go. And I could I could tell you the different categories of visible light. So remember, this is your clue. So we've got red here, violet here. So we go. Uh, Richard of York gave battle in vain, or we go um, Roy G Biv. So Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. We could write and say we could write those out. Um, what else can we do? Well, we can go back to um, we can go right back to the start of the um, the waves topic. Actually, we can we can get a ruler and we can draw a, a line down the very middle of this wave. And you can see that I've already done this in a bit of a faint outline because it helps me draw the wave. And I can say that this shows, well, this line here is showing energy transfer. Okay, now that's not necessarily the case for these. You don't need to think about them all being transmitted out and the energy going from one way to the other. They can, they can go either way. Um, but we do remember that. We, we know what this line is called, this line here Let's label that is the, the line of zero, the line of zero disturbance. We know what this is. We know that from the line of zero disturbance to the peak or to the trough is called the, that's called the amplitude. And you probably also might know what the distance between two equivalent or identical points on a wave is called. Well, that is one wavelength. Okay, so we're, we're starting now to pull back in not just what we've seen in this video, but, but what we've seen previously. What else could we add in? Well, we could actually start to add in the uses and dangers. So I'll, I'll grab a different color. We'll go back to the red to try and make this stand out a little bit. So we could talk about radio waves. So we could say that radio, we could talk about their uses. Again, if you know this, pause this, we can come back to it. I'm just gonna focus this a little bit because it's just jumped out of focus there. So we've got the use of the radio. Well, we know that we use radio waves um, for radio and TV communication. Okay. Um, and in terms of the dangers, 
there are none. Okay, there are no dangers of the radio waves. And you could do that for all of the all of these. You could do you can know you could start here with your microwaves, your infrared, your visible, your x-rays, and your gamma. I'm not going to do that now because otherwise this video would just keep going on and on and on. But the whole point of a goal-free task is to just to just to make you think and make those connections in your brain that is learning, because that's all learning is. It's just taking information and connecting it to um, to information that you, you've already got in your brain and developing um, the ability to just have this concept in your head and to know how everything fits together like a big jigsaw. Okay, hopefully this was really useful for you, this um, this video on, on EM waves. But hopefully this strategy is really useful for you too. You can do this with anything. And as I say, you don't need to start with... Um, with a picture, you can actually just say, all right, okay, I'm going to revise my knowledge of any topic and just start with a blank piece of paper and just start to write down. And the first couple of ideas will be a bit difficult, but then you'll get on a roll and they'll link together. And by doing that, your, um, your learning will improve so much and your ability to remember will improve so much. Okay, I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.